The uh, Veneto Clax is probably from the new treatments the most powerful drug we have so far and the problem with this drug is it's so powerful that when you when in the first studies patients were treated with a full dose there were some cases of severe tumor lysis syndrome meaning the lymph nodes sh were shrinking so fast and uh, the lymphocytosis count came down so fast that there was a severe kidney damage and unfortunately there were even two or three patients who died because of this kidney damage and therefore the new regimen was developed with a slow dose increase of venetoclax where we start with 20 milligrams and then every week increase double the dose until um, we reach the final dose of 400 milligrams that means so far within clinical studies for the patients that so it's an oral drug it's not so simple as, for example, other oral drugs we have right now because and the physicians have to check the blood before the first drug and then eight hours later if there is um, already an increase in a, a, a kidney value. And therefore that means for the patients they have to be very compliant, um, they have to drink a lot of water and they also have to be close to a physician or maybe even to a hospital when they're feeling better because of of course, what we are most afraid of is killing a patient or bringing a patient into danger whom we can treat very, very well with this drug and therefore we have to be very careful um, at the beginning. But in our experience, usually we know there's a certain group of patients who has a very high risk developing kidney damage and for the, uh, for the rest of the patients it's not so problematic and we will learn to have special safety aspects for this specific high risk group for tumor lysis, and gr uh, tumor lysis syndrome. So far the drug is not yet licensed. Uh, licensed it will be licensed in um, relapse CLL and uh, this is a very good question because nobody knows um, when should we use the drug, should we use the drug before abrutinib, should we use it afterwards? It will be first licensed, of course, in the in relapse setting, and um, probably mm, pay especially patients with 17 P deletion and TP53 mutation. Here we see no worse no, or no inferior activity, while we see inferior activity of abrutinib or idelalisib in patients with 17 P deletion. So. And therefore, I think, personally think, this is a patient group which should be treated as soon as the drug is um, available with ABT199. But of course, if the drug is working so well, the question is why shouldn't we treat every patient with the drug? This is uh, very difficult and we will need a lot of data and studies in order to define for which patient group the best drug is available and also where we can justify the costs of the different drugs and duration of treatment.